Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. This is your Manchester United Brighton preview. It's Sunday night, half past seven kickoff at Old Trafford. Now, before the international break, we lost 3-1 to Leicester in the FA Cup quarter final. It was an abysmal performance by Manchester United. And Fred, he got criticised because he was abysmal. You know, Fred gave the ball away countless times and he was accountable for Leicester's first goal. Fred probably enjoyed the worst game in his Man United career. And I can assure he wasn't worth the £52 million we got him for from Shakhtar Donetsk. The only positive from a Man United perspective in that game against Leicester was Mason Greenwood's goal. But Leicester totally dominated the game. Obviously, Ian Acho, he scored two goals. And the other goal came from Yori Tillemans. So Leicester progressed to the FA Cup semi-final for the first time since, what, 1982. So we are looking to bounce back in this game against Brighton. Now Brighton, they're sitting what? Is it 16th in the Premier League? Their current manager is Graham Potter. Obviously before Graham Potter was at Brighton, um, he was at Swansea. And he's also managed Ostersund. He was in charge of Ostersund for seven years. And Brighton have got some good players. Um, obviously, they've got Ben White. Uh, Man United are actually interested in Ben White. They've also got Tarek Lamptey. He's very, very good. Um, he's actually out with injury at the moment. They've got Louis Stunk. He's also very, very good. They've got Alze, who's quite good. They've got Alistair, who's quite good. Uh, Danny Welbeck, they've got him. I think he'll be in contention to play in this game. So he'll be reuniting with Man United because Danny Welbeck is a former Man United player. They've also got Maupe, who's probably one of Brighton's best players. Uh, they've got Moises Casido. They've got Pascal Gross. Uh, don't forget, they've got Adam Lallana. By the way, Brighton have got a few injuries. Uh, Connolly's out with injury. Adam Webster's out with injury. Andorn's out with injury. Solly March is out with injury. And like I said, Tarek Clamps is out with injury. Injury. We've beaten Brighton twice this season. We've beaten them 3 0 in the EFL Cup and we've beaten them 3 2 in the Premier League. Well, it was actually 2 2 and the whistle had gone. And then obviously we'd been given, was it, a penalty after the whistle had blown. But we converted the penalty and won the game. 
And I think the last time we played Brighton at Old Trafford, we beaten them 3-1. Now, we have got some injuries. Uh, Marcus Rashford has got an injury. Um, he's sustained quite a few injuries now at Manchester United. Um, Anthony Martial um, also got an injury during the international break. Uh, not so long ago he had a hip injury and he had an injury before that. Um, I think Lindelof, he's got a back problem. Um, I think Juan Mata still out. Uh, Mason Greenwood, he's got a knock. Uh, Phil Jones, obviously he's still out with injury. He's been out of injury for over a year. All right. So, yeah, there's some of the injuries that Man United have got. But it'll be interesting to see how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer approaches this game. Now, I can assure we will finish in the top four this season. I think there's a good chance that we'll finish second. After Brighton, it's Granada in the Europa League quarter final. And I think Manchester United must win the Europa League because if we win the Europa League, that marks progress. Solskjaer's not yet won a trophy as Manchester United manager and we haven't won a trophy since 2017. Ollie did say, though not so long ago, that winning trophies can be an ego thing. He said that in regards to some other managers and some other clubs. And he just basically said, said clubs like Man United, trophies no longer prove success. I've got to totally disagree with him in that aspect. But if we fail to win the Europa League this season, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will not be sacked. So I can assure he will be with us in the summer transfer window and he will be here for next season. I said he does deserve at least another season at the football club, but I can assure he isn't the long-term manager for Man United. And uh, my next game after Granada is Tottenham in the league. And Tottenham is going to be a difficult game. Now, uh, this year's summer transfer window is the biggest in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career. I'm ex expecting us to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window. I reckon Solskjaer needs at least £200 million if he's to get the players he wants to recommend in. He said our transfer budget had been revealed earlier on this season. It's £80 million. And we know £80 million is nowhere near enough for us to get the players we want to recommend in. I've already identified the weaknesses in the squad. I think Solskjaer should get the backing he deserves in the summer transfer window because Woodward has come out and said that he believes that Solskjaer is the right man to lead, lead the club forward. He released a statement earlier on this season saying that the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear. So in that aspect, Woodward is backing him. And in general, Woodward's come out several times to show his support for Ole, even enduring them bad periods. Our board have got a very soft stance on Ole with him being a club legend and obviously we've got John Murtough, he's our director of football. We made the right decision getting a director of football in because I did say that's one of the structural changes that we need at the club and John Murtough knows the club inside out because he's been at Man United since 2014 Obviously, we've got Darren Fletcher. He's our technical director. You know, he endured two decades as a player for Man United, so he knows the club through thick and thin. And Solskjaer's already discussed our transfer targets with our recruitment team, and he's discussed our transfer plans for the summer in general. 
The summer transfer window will be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fifth transfer window as permanent Man United manager. But yeah, there's a lot of players on our agenda, like I've just mentioned earlier on. Ben, Ra ben White's on our agenda. Um, Jules Conde from Sevilla, he's on our agenda. Now, Sevilla have slapped a £68 million asking price on Jules Conde. Uh, Fabrizio Romano's been talking about it. He said Sevilla's £68 million asking price could compl complicate the deal. But he said he's one of the most appreciated players on United's radar. Now, it said a couple of weeks ago that we'd been handed a boost in our bid to sign Cone Day because Sevilla reduced their asking price to £50 million. Jules Cone Day's buyout clause is £68 million, but it said earlier on this season we was not willing to meet it. It said earlier on this season we was prepared to pay around £61 million. And Larazion said we were considered the favourites. His performances for Sevilla have been outstanding. He's been at Sevilla almost two years. Sevilla paid £22 million for him from Bordeaux in the summer of 2019. And he's got a contract with Sevilla until 2024. I think he'd go very well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. Uh, Pau Torres, you know... He's another centre-half we've been looking at. Paul Torres currently plays for Villarreal. Now, reports from Spain said not so long ago that Paul Torres wants to come to Man United and Real Madrid's president, Florentina Perez, was angry with Man United for entering the race because Real Madrid were emerged as the favourites to get Paul Torres. Paul Torres has been at Villarreal a long time. He's got a release clause of £52 million, but we believe we can get him for less than that. Uh, there's still a lot of narratives coming out regarding Rafael Varane from Real Madrid. Um, I recently give you the news on Marcos Llorente from Atletico Madrid. Now, it said that Atletico Madrid have set the price for Man United to sign Llorente. We will have to pay his entire 103 million release clause. There was reports coming out from Spain last Friday saying that we made an offer of 68.5 million for Marcus Lorente and we was prepared to double his 90,000 pound a week wages. But he said a move was unlikely. Atletico Madrid paid £35 million for him from Real Madrid and he's got a contract with Atletico until 2024. He can play as a midfielder and a second striker. Uh, there's been a hell of a lot of narratives coming out regarding Erling Haaland. Now apparently... Mini Oriola and Erling Haaland are in Barcelona for talk. So reflecting on that, there's a chance that Haaland will go to Barcelona. He's been subjected to a lot of transfer speculation. There's a lot of clubs in for him. Uh, Mini Oriola was talking about it not so long ago. He said he may have made a mistake sending Haaland to Dortmund. Maybe it was just too careful. Now, apparently, Haaland is demanding £600,000 a week if he's to join Man United, Man City or Chelsea. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has revealed that Erling Haaland struggled with bad knees at Mulder, but Ole said he was impressed how... Erling Haaland trained at Mulder. He said the other week that Solskjaer kept calling Erling Haaland to persuade him to join Man United earlier on this season. He said he was following Haaland's progress and he was keeping in touch with him. 
It'd be good to see Oli reunite with a player because Solskjaer worked with Haaland. He gave him his debut at just the age of 16 at Mulder. Uh, it said as well, Dortmund have revealed their asking price for Haaland. It's £154 million. Dortmund do find it extremely difficult to sell him if they are demanding that much. There's a good chance Haaland will leave Dortmund, especially if Dortmund failed to qualify for the Champions League. And Erling Haaland's father, Alf Hinch Haaland, he's, you know, been talking about his son's career and his prospects. He's spoken about his transfer links to Man United before. I take Haaland at Man United because he dramatically improves. He's still young and he's got a lot of development in him. And he would assure us goals because he's clinical. He's been at Dortmund over the year. He's got a contract with them till 2024. Dortmund paid just £17 million for him. Uh, we are still in for Jadon Sancho from Borussia Dortmund, but we won't sign Haaland and Sancho. That won't happen. Uh, Sancho would be a cheaper solution, though, than Haaland. We're still in for Sancho and we believe we can get him for the cut price fee of £50 million. Pounds. Jaden Sancho has visited our Carrington training ground quite a few times so that obviously fueled quite a few things up. It said earlier on this season that we dropped our interest in Sancho due to the progress of Mason Greenwood, but then we'd been given a boost because Borussia Dortmund's CEO come out and said that Sancho, Haaland and more Dortmund stars could be sold in the summer transfer window to avoid financial crisis. Sancho was our number one priority target last summer, but Borussia Dortmund's valuation was £108 million. You know, we was not willing to meet that valuation. We was only willing to pay so much up front. But last summer, it said that the personal terms had been agreed for Sancho, the agent fees had been agreed, and even a contract had been agreed. But we couldn't come to an agreement on an actual fee, so that was the stumbling block. And Fabrizio Romano, he's spoken a lot about the Jade and Sancho transfer saga, and so too has built Christian Farr. But we had until the 10th of August to sign Sancho last summer. We missed out on that deadline, so Sancho remained at Dortmund. And he made an admission earlier on this season saying that he has endured a difficult season at Dortmund. But analysing the vast majority of his career, he has been very, very consistent. Uh, there's been a lot of narratives coming out about Usman Dembele recently. Uh, Spanish outlet Sport said that Man United have increased their interest in Usman Dembele. We've been monitoring his displays this season. We're preparing a bid for him. And we've been talking with his representatives now. I think he's valued at around £50 million or is it £60 million? Don't forget, we wanted to get Usman Dembele on loan with an option to buy, but obviously it didn't go through. Fabrizio Romano did recently say that Usman Dembele is set to hold talks with Barcelona over a new contract. Usman Dembele has been at Barcelona a few years now. Barcelona... Got him in a deal worth £135 million from Dortmund. Barca paid £90-odd million pounds up front. I think it was £97 million up front. He's injury-prone, though, so that's my element of concern about him. Still young, got a lot of development in him. And I think he's got, like, 15 months left on his current contract at Barcelona. Like I said, we are going to sell players in the summer transfer window. You know, there's a good chance that Cavani's going to go. Uh, good chance Matt is going to go. A lot of United fans are saying we need to sell Martial. Good chance Matic will, Matic will go. 
you know, will we sell Fred in the summer transfer window? Good chance Donny van der Beek's going to go. I just give you the news on Donny van der Beek on my recent video. Man United are considering a Donny van der Beek swap deal. Two or Sport have come out and said that Man United are willing to offer Donny van der Beek to Juventus in exchange for Adrian Rabiot. Donny van der Beek hasn't been given enough opportunities at Manchester United. He was out of injury though for a while. Uh, Paul Popper, it's looking very likely he's going to leave in the summer transfer window because Demarzio's come out and recently said that Paul popper has got no intentions of extending his Man United contract and his preferred destination is Juventus. So Paul Popper still wants to quit Man United and he's rejected a new contract. Don't forget, Paul Popper's current contract expires in 2022. So we wouldn't want to let him go on a three. So basically, if we want to cash in for him, we need to sell him this summer. Um, I think Jones needs to go. Uh, good chance we're going to sell David De Gea. Uh, Romero, you know, probably going to get rid of him. Eric Bay, will Man United sell him? I don't think so. I think we'll keep him potentially past the summer. Last time I read up regarding Bay, it said contract talks for Eric Bay are on hold because he wants assurances over his playing time. Bay did recently apologise to Solskjaer and his Man United teammates for his disrespectful behaviour because it said Bay was furious with Solskjaer because he felt disrespected and not wanted by him and Bay believes we're only offering him a new contract to simply increase his asking price. Bay has got like, what, 15 months left on his current contracts. My only element of concern about Bay is too injury prone, so in that aspect he is a liability. Diego De Law, I think we'll be also looking to get rid of him permanently, so... Imagine if we sold all them in the summer transfer window, would generate a substantial amount and it'd help us with our rebuilding process. There's a lot of players that are going to stay in the summer transfer window. You know, I think Dean Henderson's going to stay. I think Dean Henderson's got a long-term future at Man United. You know, he's still young. He's got a lot of development in him. And I think Dean Henderson is now reliable enough to become our number one because he's got that experience behind him. Don't forget, he endured two successful loans with Sheffield United. And before the start of this season, Dean Henderson signed a six-year contract with the club worth around hundred and twenty grand a week. Dean Henderson has started our last six games in a row. Um, definitely Luke Shaw will. I think Luke Shaw's got a long-term future at Man United. If he keeps, obviously, these good performances up, Luke Shaw's been exceptional this season. You know, I like the way he's attacked. He's got in good positions. He's put good crosses into the box. And defensively, he's been superb. Luke Shaw's had a good career at Man United apart from his injuries. He's been at the club now over six years, Luke Shaw. I think we are preparing to give him a new contract. Eric Bay, he could stay in the summer transfer window. Uh, Victor Lindelof, I reckon he'll stay in the summer transfer window. He has been criticised a lot. And I've always had my strong reservations about Lindelof. But yeah, I think we'll keep him potentially past the summer. But I don't think he's got a long-term future at Man United. In a lot of Victor Lindelof's games at Man United, he's been too inconsistent. Harry Maguire, he'll stay in the summer transfer window. Harry Maguire's enjoyed some good games this season, but he's also enjoyed some poor games. But... Either way, he wasn't worth the £80 million we got him for. He's the second most expensive sign at the club and he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment. And Wan uh, he'll stay. I think he's got a long-term future at Man United. He's had some good games this season where he's showed good attacking intent. He's made some good overlapping runs. He's got in some good crossing positions and defensively he's been superb, but... 
when Bissaka's been poor, he's been caught out far too many times and he's lacked that attacking intent. He needs to show more attacking intent. Uh, Scott McTominway, he'll stay in the summer transfer window. You know, McTominway's a decent player. You know, he's still young, he's got a lot of development in him. McTominway's not at that level yet where we want him to be at. Can he emulate to that level? I think it was just after the first lockdown last year, he signed a new five-year contract with Man United did McTominway. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, obviously, he'll stay. Bruno Fernandes is our best player and he's the best signing we have made since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Fernandes has been at the club over the year, hasn't he? In most of his games at Manchester United, he's been very consistent. But there's also been a few games where he's looked off the pace. But let's be honest, we have overplayed him. But earlier on this season, Bruno Fernandes denied that he needed a rest. Because obviously Bruno Fernandes wants to win trophies at Man United because he said he came to Manchester to win trophies. There was narratives coming out earlier on this season saying that Bruno Fernandes was refusing to sign a new contract until he has assurances over our transfer plans. Fernandez's his current contract with us expires in 2025. There's an option to extend for the further 12 months. We initially paid around £47 million for him, but the overall cost with add-ons is just over £67 million. Fernandez said on his 12-month anniversary that he's planning on spending many years at Man United. Uh, obviously, Mason Greenwood will stay. Uh, Greenwood's been fantastic since he broke into our first-team squad. Greenwood, and he made like 80-odd first-team appearances now. You know, he's been in our senior squad since 2019 and he's been a United player since the age of seven, so he's been with us a long time. Earlier on this season, Mason Greenwood signed a new four-year contract with the club. Sometimes we play him on the right wing and sometimes we play him up top. Marcus Rashford, obviously, he'll stay. Like I said, he's out with injury at the moment. But um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, he's been Manchester United manager over two years now. As you all know, Solskjaer has agreed to sign a new three-year contract with the club worth £30 million. You know, sources at Old Trafford did say a few weeks ago that, you know, talks were set to begin any day on the new deal. Because um, Ole is now into the final year of his current three-year contract. Does he deserve a new contract? In some aspects, yeah. In some aspects, no. There's a lot of Man United fans that are now Ole out anyway. Ole outs were trending on social media after our 3-1 defeat to Leicester. Obviously, they've got main explanations why they want him out. So, there you go. So anyway guys, that's everything to update with today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. Uh, by the way, on my next video, I will be giving you my starting 11 prediction for this game against Brighton. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel, like I say. If you do, consider subscribers always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.